KTVU's Ali Rasmus out there this morning, and you have a, an interview with the fire chief, Ali, or battalion. That's right, Pam. Well, the closest city streets to where this is under this overpass is Wood and West Grand in West Oakland. And I want to bring in Battalion Chief Frank Tijivoy. Thanks for speaking with us this morning. What can you tell us about what is burning and is anyone hurt? Is anyone unaccounted for? Well, good morning. Uh, what we have is we have a, a RV, a full size van and two vehicles and a lot of debris that's on that's on fire right now. Uh, when this first uh, came in, we um, had some tough some tough access issues. We had crews who came back here, which we do come here for quite a few fires. Um, and the challenges that we have here is we can't get um, a water supply. So when there's crew, no hydrants there's nearby, no hydrants, it's all out here on the street. So when my first crew came inside, they encountered a chain link fence um, that 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 was around the whole area. So they had to cut cut that. Um, and as they were doing that, the fire was was getting bigger. Then we changed our tactics and we found that there was this gate that was open for this empty lot, which is when we decided to bring the fire engine that you see here. We were able to have a hydrant, as you see, the hose that's on the ground. So now we have an unlimited supply of water, which is great. How far did you have to run this hose? A couple blocks? This is probably about three to 400 feet. So about, about a few blocks, yes. Anyone hurt? As of now, no. So we did get reports from um, from someone that was in, in that encampment was that everybody was out. What so did they say when you arrived about how this started? They told, uh, um, we don't know that. But another challenge that we had is we had a lot of propane tanks that were exploding at the same time. So we had to create, you know, distance and, and, uh, and retreat back a yeah, bit. We can show that uh, it looks like you're about, a uh, fire truck here is about 75 feet away from that. RV and the, the bus that are burning the fire engine. Yeah. 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 About 100, about, about 100 feet away or so. How many propane tanks were there? We, uh, we don't know. There were just a bunch that that were going off. When 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 we hear that, we do retreat and we do not get get near them. How large is this encampment? You say you've been to fires here before. This is fa this is fairly large. I'd say blocks, blocks, multiple blocks. Right underneath the right 880. Underneath freeway. the 880 West West Grand. Uh, on ramp here. How uh, dangerous could this have been uh, for the people living here and also the firefighters with those exploding propane tanks? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, if this gate was, was not open, normally this is not open, we would have had a tough time getting, um, you know, getting water on, on the fire. So it could have been a lot, uh, uh, you know, harm, you know harmful, harmful to us with the, with the propane tanks, as well as, as the people in, in, inside there in, of the encampment. But, we were we were very we were very um, fortunate here, and our crews did a great job. They they went in there, and when they had the challenges, they were quick enough to to change our strategy. So, great job on our crews. Right. Uh, Battalion Chief Frank Tijiboy, thank you uh, for speaking with us about this. Glad uh, your firefighters are okay. Glad everyone is okay and so accounted for. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, so uh, again, oh, Battalion Chief, how long before this fire is out? You think? We'll probably have it contained. I would say the next. A half hour or so. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank All right. So in about a half hour, they hope to have this fire contained. Again, the good news is that everyone is accounted for. No one living at this homeless encampment is uh, reported missing or no injuries, no injuries to firefighters as well, even though, as you heard the battalion chief say, they had quite a few uh, challenges in getting access to this RV, this bus, and another vehicle that's burning or that was burning here at this homeless encampment and also the challenges with all the propane tanks uh, exploding as they try to do their work. But we'll continue to follow up on this and bring you another live update later in the show. Dave and Pam, back to you. And Allie, before you go really quick, if people are just joining us, is this affecting traffic at all since it's right underneath the maze? Well, I know that you earlier, I was able to see the fire coming in on 980. So the flames are pretty visible or were pretty visible when they were larger. But now you can see the fire sort of dying down a little bit. They're getting more of a handle on it. As you heard the battalion chief say, in about a half an hour, they hope to have this completely out. Luckily, the fire did not spread anywhere. Directly above it is 880. And because this uh, uh, overpass is so high off the ground, I, it's, I can't imagine it's affecting traffic in terms of visibility because it, we're just a couple hundred feet below uh, where that overpass goes. So not that I can tell, not affecting traffic from what I can see here, but again, I'm um, far below the overpass and I don't have a good vantage point of what the traffic is like at the top. Okay, good. That's that's mm -hmm. good news. And, and as you showed us, the uh, smoke has died down. So great. Thank you for that update, Allie.